I'm excited today. I'm going to be sharing with you a lesson about florals and we're going to take it beyond realism. We're going to capture just the essence of the subject without too much detail. For me that's pretty hard because I really like realism but I'm going to try real hard just to go with the essence. Uh, to start with, we're going to talk about materials. It's pretty much just your regular colors, brushes. I pretty much plan to use about a size 8 or 10, except for wetting the paper. Of course, I'll be using a larger one. But I am going to introduce a new product called Brusho. And I shouldn't say new. It's been with us for over 35 years, but the product is new to me. It's a very, very highly pigmented, transparent watercolor crystal. And sometimes it's referred to as ink crystals. I like to think of it as watercolor crystals. And you can, there's many ways that you can apply it. One of the ways is, first of all, you always have to wet your paper. And you can just snap the cover off. And that exposes all these fine pigmented crystals. And then with a dry brush, you can reach in and just sprinkle it. And you can see already some of the magic taking place. They're pretty incredible, that's all I can say. And this is um, one way to do it. I kind of like, just take, I just poked a hole in the top of it. And you can see it comes with this color. I know what color it is, but not all of the product comes that way. Some of them I wrote on what, what the color is. But I love it like this. And see now I can just take and sprinkle it and it just comes out. I don't have to touch it or take a chance. I'm going to show you later a painting I have where <laughs> the, the, I went to shake it like this and the cover hadn't been put on properly and I just dumped a whole pile on my picture. I was able to save it though. And always be sure to get the same top back in. A lot of times when I share these with my students they put the orange top and the yellow and it, it does make a difference. Now, one of the things about brush, brush oil, I have to really emphasize this, the colors, look at, see that little bit of powder, oh my gosh, just that little bit of powder is already on this paper. So I'll see if I can get a clean area here and show you some of these other colors. Now I'm looking forward to you using some yellow, it's really pretty, and I'm also going to use some orange. And I love it because it sort of forms the center of the flowers. And then of course, if you spray into it, you get even more activation. It changes, you can, the colors you can, I mean, you can come in and draw into it if you want to. Make some of those six organs. And the thing I also want to do is warn you. Oh, these colors are so incredible. You can't just say, oh, turquoise, this sounds good. I think, I think I'll try a little turquoise. And all of a sudden, your whole picture has been taken over with that color. So it's be, I have to warn you to be very cautious. Now there's another whole line of these. They're not brush -o. They're by Ken Oliver. And these, he refers to these as concentrated watercolor powder. But what I like about it is Ken's got a, applicator and you can see it you can I just frequently use this when I'm doing abstract because I can do a line with the applicator but I find it gets plugged with the water so I found a fairly easy solution I love this oh my Ken Olivers are in the have these on them and what that is is just a paper clip and I open it up stick it in and then it just keeps it clean. So these are great too. The uh, other good news is they're non-toxic and non-hazardous. So good luck. I hope you can give them a try. Let's get started. So I'm gonna start by showing you a number of paintings that I've done getting ready for this lesson. And there are two things that are very important. The main focus of this lesson is first of all, hard edges. So here where you can see the edges very defined and lost edges. Love that. If you, if you close everything in really tight, 
it just it's too traditional too perfect too realistic we're trying to push and pull the realism factor the other thing we're going to do is we're going to concentrate on negative painting which is this painting in the background and then the positive where we break out and paint a positive image and of course look at how much fun this was lifted just with a mr clean magic eraser and a stencil and most of the time we're working with familiar flowers but hey i have no idea what this is this was something i started 4 30 in the afternoon i'd been on my computer all day and i said okay garland give yourself a half an hour of fun so i wet this half sheet and i just did all this stuff i even took a brush and just pull the paint it has to, you have to do it when it's wet i pull that paint out into the margins with just this wow big flurry painted this whole thing in 20 minutes came back in before it got really dry and did some of the negative pulled it out into some of the positive and this to me was the real breakthrough when i started painting like this i thought oh good i have a lesson and this is what it's going to start out like we're going to totally wet the paper and we're going to throw in some brush oh you can see some of the fun we're going to throw in salt we're going to cut up wax paper throw some bam water at it just all kinds of fun stuff and then we're going to there's no drawing involved at all then we're going to look at it and say hmm now oh i see a flower starting here this could be interlocking with another flower over here and the other thing is this path of dark. You can see I've already thought about that in the underpainting, but that needs to be developed with some more darks, a different level, darker dark. So this is off to a good start. Now here's another one, a little bit further along. You can see some of the, you want to leave a lot of white shapes. The whites are very important because then you can put color into that. And see, when we start painting the negative, You'll hear me harp about this over and over. It's very important that you only do a little bit of the negative, then stop. Then do some more, then stop. Because otherwise, if you start enclosing the whole thing, it's, it's too tight. This way you can have lights. You can see here where the petals against the dark are left light. And over here, the petals against the light are painted dark. And that reversal is, is really what makes these paintings exciting. See, I can't wait to finish this one. Here's some of my earlier ones. This one actually has some collage on it, too. And uh, any flower, any flower is going to work. A lot of times I'll have a flower in mind when I start, and other times I just let it happen. This one, I have no idea what these flowers are. But I do like flowers that have multi-petals, a petal on top of another petal, another petal behind it, rather than a simple one, two, three, four, five petals all the same. That's boring. So you can see I try to go for variety. Sometimes I have little shapes. I don't know what they are, but I like them because they're helping to fill the space up. Other areas have nothing in them, rest areas. Others have these very lost, edges just melting out to the edge of the paper with the darkest darks next to your flowers. Uh, here's one where I probably pushed it too far. But this, I just did this, this is the last one I did. It was at a Cheap Joe's workshop. And I find when I'm working with students, I tend to get more realistic. But I still tried really hard. If you look into the background, you'll see all this fun stuff. And a lot of that's going to just be left. That, this is actually very close to finished. This one here, now I'm going to show a lot of these step by step in a minute. And this one, uh, I started out with dry paper and actually sprayed away the edges. So you'll notice some of these edges are a little crisper than the other ones. But I, either way, I love the fact that it's all about the negative areas in the positive areas and it's all about the hard edges and the lost edges the hard edges and the lost edges the lost edges see where this white comes right into the flower you can go back out again come in again here go out again here 
I really think it's like welcoming the viewer. Come on into my flower. You know, you leave it soft and open, and then you keep them there for a little while with all these hard edges. It works. This was one of my very early ones, and actually one of my favorites. You'll see this in progress. And this one I never did take to the really, really hard edges. They're fairly hard. But I just, uh, again, it happened very quickly, and I said I like it, and I quit. So a lot of it, you got to know when to hold them, and you got to know when to fold them. This is all going to unveil itself. <laughs> Here's another one you're going to see step by step. And I couldn't stop on this one. This one has more detail than most of them. But you can see I did break out finally with some positive. I focused a lot on the negative. But it goes from negative to positive to negative to positive. It just, just keeps switching around. And I especially like this. I hope I'm able to do this today. Where you have the suggestion of flowers and some that are in the back, that you push them into the background. Just cover them with paint. See how these are all with uh, a tone on them. This is the whitest white. So these go back, this comes forward. And then the whitest white generally holds your attention and then it softens out again. And see it's these lost edges and found edges, they're all similar. Here's another one that's not quite completed yet, but one that I certainly will complete. And I'm having so much fun here focusing on the negative painting, but then reversing it into positive. Here we have basically negative painting, but over here we have positive. And this one, I don't have enough lost edges. See, I gotta listen to myself. I, I started to get a little bit too complete, filling it all in. In my demonstration today, I'm going to try to keep lost and found. Here's one that started, you'll see this in progress too. This one started with collage papers and I looked at it and went, oh, it's got to be, it's got to be sunflowers. So a lot of times when I start these, I have no idea what they're going to be. I just do it and we'll see what happens. And this was uh, one of my very first, this was my very first class. It was a group of ladies from Hayward that came up. And actually, they did a great job. They come every year, and they're my my trial run. <laughs> and that, this one was really, I like it. And see, what I especially like about this one is this beautiful, warm color here coming through from the background against the white flowers. And then I repeated the yellows on some of the flowers. So I, I think this one turned out pretty good, especially for a demo in a class. Oops, and here's another one. Probably took this one too far again. I, I do that. So don't be disappointed if you go too far. Just try another one. Okay, this is a sequence of the procedure. Now here's one where I wet the whole surface and I just came in with these colors, let it dry. Then I came in later, wet the whole thing again, and came in with these darks over the top. And it's actually a little different than what I'm going to show you today, but you might want to try this yourself. Do the wet into wet start and then wet it again and come in. This is the one I started a little differently too. I actually started this with dry paper and with a sprayer. I sprayed around the edges. And I, I liked it because it left some edges very hard and white and other edges very lost. So this is the very beginning. Then I started looking for those flowers in there. Started coming in with a mostly negative painting. Then, aha, I found a flower here and I found some flowers here and one here. And you can see the brush over here. That's that wild turquoise. I said, be careful. But you know what? I just, for, it forced me to go darker because I had to do something about that brush -o. And so you can see in the very end between the brush -o and added salt, it actually, I think, turned out to be a nice painting. Here's another beginning. Very, this one's totally wet, very soft. And now I'm starting to pull in a little bit of negative and positive. I don't know what the flowers are going to be yet. I'm just starting to find them. And by the way, the, oops.
By the way, this is the one where I spilled the brush off. See that big pile? <laughs> Can happen. And then of course I added more color and I just kept looking and looking for more flowers, some stems, some leaves. And eventually it just started to come together. And this is the one I still have to finish. That's, that's how far I am right now. But getting close, the, the, the hardest thing for me is not to take it too far. And I think you'll experience that too. This is the underpainting for the one that I decided was a perfect sunflower picture. And of course I had to do more. Now this one was really fun to do, totally wet, just coming in with these colors. This one has a lot of more positive than I usually do. I actually wanted to work with red flowers, but I saved some white areas to be white flowers. And then as I developed it, I decided to do mixed media. I got out my watercolor crayons, the Caron Dash crayons, and between a blue and a white crayon, I started scribbling around, having some fun. And I'd look at it and I'd say, it still needs more structure. So I got in with these really strong dark shapes, sort of a Shirley Trevina thing. I didn't photograph it very well. It actually was straight, but this is the best I could do just to show you. It, um, I like it. It's just a kind of a cruciform design. But you can do this to any painting. Whenever you're not totally satisfied, think about adding dark shapes. Here's another one that started with the dry paper and just spraying and wet, basically getting the paper almost totally wet, except for the white hard edges I saved. And then I started coming in with the negative. And this is, this is the one that I had no idea what it was going to be. Here's another one that I saved with the dark shapes in the background. I really do like that. See, all the ones with the dark shapes I've already sold. That's why I have to show them to you like this. So there's something to be said that has a great appeal. And I like the contrast. See, when you get those dark shapes, it really pops out the lights and the whites. So something to think about. One more here. This is, again, a beginning. And this is going to be more like what, what I'm going to do today. I'm going to put down, I went outside and grabbed some things that were dead, actually. <laughs> I think they're called pig's tails or horse's tail. I think it's a horse's tail. And I just thought, I'm going to lay that down and see what happens. And see, it does give you some little textures that are kind of nice. We're just looking for fun things to happen. Here you can see the dark starting. A little more development now. On this one, we've got light areas against the dark negative, and we have dark areas against the light background. And then just again going in for the final darks without losing all those nice soft edges. That's that's the hard part. So now we're ready to get started. So we're ready to begin. And the one thing that is really, really important is to be on the front of the paper. Absolutely critical. There's more sizing, and especially when you're doing a wet and to wet underpainting. And of course, I didn't mark this, but I can tell by looking. These shapes look kind of concave and bumpier, and this side looks smoother, and the bumps appear to come forward. So I know this is the back of the paper, and of course, using my biggest brush right now it's a one and a half inch brush I'm going to wet the back and the front and when you do this it keeps the paper much wetter for a longer period of time it also allows your paper to lay flat so you notice I don't tape the picture down a lot of people do that I don't like that because then you end up with all these wrinkles and bumps you're fighting it all the while. This way my paper lies flat the entire time I'm painting. I really like that. Oh, I can see we've still got some of those. Oh, look at all the red brush. Oh, I guess we're going to have to do a red painting here. <laughs> Be careful with brush. Oh, that's all I can say. <laughs> 
I take a sponge and clean my table every day if I'm using it because those the powders go everywhere. Good thing they're not hazardous. So the fun is going to start right now. One of the things, I love yellow, so I've got to put some yellow in. So when I put the yellow, I don't want to paint it because that gives you solid color. I want to save some of the white, so I basically throw the yellow in. And this, these probably will be flowers. Let's have one down here. There's already some color there. I think I better have another one over here. <laughs> And then I'm, I want some white flowers too, so I'm going to save the rest basically for the white. And I really enjoy doing analogous colors, so I'm going to start throwing in some colors related to yellow right next door. Nice friendly orange. And then I'm thinking about maybe increasing that a little scarlet lake. Let's just get a little bit more color down here. Yeah. See, they're already looking like flowers. Now I'm thinking about some negative painting. And I think what I'll do is go into the purple tones. I'm going to take some permanent magenta with just a little bit of French ultramarine in it to cool it a bit. And we're going to start looking for some of these flowers and while I'm doing this I'm starting now to think about my path of dark so I think what I'll do is come in into the picture from here and my paper is very very wet and stretching so I'm going to just give it a little straighten it out just a little bit so I'm going to start here and come in and then I think what I'll do is meander through here start thinking that'll be a that'll probably be a flower and I can vary this from a warmer to a cooler purpley color here's a little warmer and then this could be two flowers let's come through here and maybe maybe go off up here I might even kill this corner I'm going to put a little more cool in it, a little more French ultramarine, and I'm going to start defining what could be a flower here. So I like my path so far. I think I need to come over. I don't want to come right down the middle. Notice how I'm kind of always sticking to the thirds. It's a little, it's a better choice actually. So I think I'll wander over here and maybe start here defining this flower just a bit. Like I say, don't go all the way around. So I'm gonna leave that open. And now I'm gonna come in, kind of skip around a little bit here, and go off here. How about that? So now I've established what I hope to be my path of dark. I've done it with a warm and a cool. Now I'm gonna come in with some more warm color. I like to be, I like to paint warm. So I'm going to add a little bit more warm into this. This is some Scarlet Lake. It's actually an orange, kind of close to a red, but it's more of an orange. So that feels good just to warm it up a bit. And you'll notice I'm using a one inch flat. So that's kind of, kind of a nice size for getting everything from a narrow line to a wide line. And notice I just don't paint always wide. I tip it up and do small shape stop, maybe almost a linear shape stop. And sometimes I'll just paint out a whole area with it. So I, when you're using your brush, Think about how, how can I get variety, changing it upright, different, different ways. Not only variety and warm and cool, but uh, thick and thin. So now, ta-da, I think I want to make the sign of the cross here. I'm going to start, these already look like flowers, so this is kind of a no-brainer. I'm going to throw in, this is my Sunburst Lemon. Now these are available at 
Amazon, all the major, Cheap Joe's, Blick, Jerry's, they're, they're available everywhere. I haven't stocked them in my old store yet because I still, I'm still being very careful. I only use basically yellow and orange. That's funny. But I want some in the background. So I'm, I'm giving a pretty uh, generous shake here. That's the yellow. And now I'm going to do a little orange right on top. Oh, didn't quite get on top, but not bad. Now when you spray into these, they get even more intense and move even more. Now salt, I really like the salt. I like the mixture of the salt together. So I'm going to immediately go for some salt to break this up. In fact, I think it's even kind of fun to BAM! I've just got my fingers. Don't hold your fingers like this. You get great big ones. I just go BAM! See how my fingers are wide open? Let's try just a few more. BAM! And that activates this and it just breaks up little, little broken shapes. I kind of like that. Okay, so now I'm thinking I'm going to start, I want to move some of this color. So I'm going to do some lines, pull the color out, pull the color out and around. And I just, and then I might even have some fun here with what now is starting to look like the center of these flowers. Let's pull some out. <clears throat> I'm going to go back to my one inch flat again. And this time I'm going to start same colors, permanent magenta, French ultramarine blue. And what I like to do is work from a puddle system. So you can see here, I've got my pure permanent magenta here. <clears throat> then I've got my pure ultramarine blue over here. And I just pull out of this. Cooler here, warmer here. And this is what I think now, before it gets, it's, it's on its way to drying a little bit. I'm going to start thinking about coming in with some darker things. <clears throat> so I'm also thinking about some negative shapes that could happen within this path. I'm still going to leave some of these wide open, but it just feels good to start finding a few more little shapes here. Let's put a few more warmer colors in here. <clears throat> Whatever you do, don't make these into five petals. I've seen too many of those. The world doesn't need another painting with ten five petal flowers on it. So be sure you're thinking all the time, how can I make this a little different? So we're almost ready just to set this aside, let it dry. But I think it's important to play it as long as you can. If you're comfortable with it, stay with it. some cute little thing. There could be some small flowers down here. I like having smaller flowers here and there. Okay, now the last thing I'm going to do, this is that dead horse tail. 
<laughs> oh, before I do that, I've got an even better one. Good old wax paper. I'm going to get a piece of wax paper, fold it into three, four shapes. No big deal, I've just got it folded over here. So I'm gonna get four shapes at a time. So I'm gonna just start by cutting out kind of little petal shapes. <laughs> and I'm just gonna set these in here and let them land where they may. And the wax paper you can see immediately grabs the color and gives us some of these nice little, I love these little shapes. Now you get you could even get more more designy if you want. I actually like to just let it let it do its thing. So we'll just let these kind of fall into our dark areas mostly. And these are going to help form some of those nice negative shapes. You might end up painting around these. Who knows? And what if I put some little teeny ones in the centers here? Let's see what happens. Actually, I think that could be really nice. So I just want a few in here. Who knows, they might form my sex organs for me all by myself. In the center. Now the other thing were these horse tails. And you never know what you're going to get with these. They have to be touching. They have to form contact to do anything. And they're pretty dried up, I know. They probably would work better, but there were it's this time of year there weren't any new ones. So again, I'm kind of putting them in my taint area. Taint really a flower. It um, could be, but it's what I always call my taint area. It's not the main subject. It's just some, some area you want to develop. And my last death-defying act, salt. And I want the salt to work, especially in those centers. I don't like to put the salt in the areas I'm going to develop as my darks, but I definitely want salt in some of these areas that form the center of the flowers and some of these open shapes. So I'm staying out of the dark shapes, but I'm in the open shapes. So now we're just going to let this little rascal dry, and when I get back, we'll pull it together. Well, this is the fun part. I'm now thinking about what's underneath all this good stuff. And I find this wax paper really sticks. So instead of trying to get it off with my fingers and maybe taking a chance with um, fingernails scratching, I find this is a pretty cool thing. It's sort of like scaling a fish. <laughs> so the salt, all those little pieces of wax paper, all this other stuff. This is the fun part. Now you still have to use the braille system. <laughs> I can just feel there's a lot of salt on that surface and there's still a few little things. I've even gone so far as to frame up a painting and see a little little pieces of this plastic still left. They really get stuck. 
So, feels pretty good now. And now I'm ready to think about how do I want to design this? I'm enjoying the, um, ooh, all this fun, exciting centers that developed. Pretty excited about that. Now, I usually like to go for some kind of reference, and these are kind of cool. Be careful though, these are kind of those five and six petal flowers when you see them face on like this. Mm, it's boring. So much more interesting when they're tipped to the side, interlocking with others. You have the buds and the leaves. And see, all of these little shapes you see here can help give you ideas for your negative painting. So just a matter of maybe checking through. Eh, I don't like that one. Oh, I kind of like this one. And I especially like some of the little buds sticking out. So I think I'll just start over here. And remember now, I don't, one thing I don't want to do is I don't want to do too much. And when I do these drawings, I don't necessarily go exactly where the lines are. I go outside the lines. So this, this whole thing could be designed into a big petal and maybe another one here. So now we've got one shape and we certainly want that to lead and interlock with this shape. So I'm now going to look for another petal that's interesting. And see, just the fact that this petal is breaking into that center, or this this side, this petal here coming forward, that excites me. So I'm trying to find some kind of a shape that I, I like. And I think this is kind of nice, where we have a petal that could come up and go right over some of that center. And another petal could come up and go over part of it. And then we could have these petals kind of linking together. Another petal could come up here, come around. And then we've got all this fun stuff happening here in the center. And I love it when the petals turn. So see, now we have three petals turning. And then I like this big open spot here. So we can just bring this petal around. So what I'm trying to do is avoid the the monotony of all the petals being the same size. I think I'll just pull another petal out here. And now this would be a great spot to come in and add some kind of a bud. And I love buds. They've got those very nice looking little, little petals coming out, wrapping around them. And they very often have some kind of little foliage coming off of them. So here's a chance for us now to develop some more foliage, stems and foliage. So that feels good. Now we want to come in. This one here is so pretty. What I want to do there, ooh, look at these, have all these multiple petals here. Love that. So, and of course I like the ones that have something in front. So I think what I'll do is I'll just design, I'll just go ahead and design something crossing over the front. And then I'll just start coming in with some multiple petals coming around. And I might just let this edge just flow out without having, without drawing anything. Oh, look at I've got another one of those. So I think I'll just stop there, let that flow out, maybe add a few more petals here, maybe another one here. And now we've got all this fun stuff in here where we can develop some foliage. Or let's say, this is so nice and light, let's add some kind of a interlocking shape. Love this, this is perfect. So we're just going to come in here and, and develop some kind of a shape, jutting out, interlocking, petals. This petal can touch this petal. Another petal could come out here. 
And then even something like this is really cool. Some kind of a little bud. And see, I never worry if part of it's in the dark area. We just draw this almost like without any concern about that. Just let it happen. So that's fun. So now I like this movement. Now I want to cross over here and see all you have to do is look at a flower and say which way do I want it to go. And I kind of like this petal feels like it's coming this way. So again, I'm going to start with something crossing over the center and something coming out. Another petal going over that. And another petal starting here. Coming out here. And a lot of these, we don't have to draw them all in. I may let that just roll out. Same here. I might just let those guys just roll right out. And I always like to add a few more petals if I can. I've got the nice white area there. Why not? So now we have a lovely space in between here. This could interlock with another petal. And that is so important. Like, look at the beautiful design we have here with little shapes coming out. That's really important. This is lovely, these shapes that all touch and interlock. This is nice. And see, that's what attracted me to these. This is bad. Don't even think about it. They're stacked, they're the same size. They're, you know, it's this is boring. Where'd that come from? We'll just not even look at that. But we do need one more flower here. Kind of like this one. So again, I always say, which way do I want to do it? And I like this, this petal here coming in front. And then, now that's where we were gonna have petals breaking out too, so I gotta be careful here now. And I might just decide to make some of these petals breaking out. I sure love this idea of just coming in and drawing all this stuff after the painting dries. Oh, this is so cool. And if we want to, we can add more petals out here. But we now have basically covered our bases here. And one of the things I want to do now is I want to start looking at interlocking shapes that come up here. So I'm thinking about the possibility of just drawing in some stems and some leaves. Now, when you get really good at this, <laughs> not there yet, but when you get really good at this, you don't even have to do any drawing. You can just start painting. But I'm just making the assumption that you guys would feel a little more comfortable if I actually drew in some of these shapes. So when I draw in a shape like this, then what I do is I'll draw another one, this time interlocking with it. See that petal's going this way, so now I purposely made a shape going this way. And then I'll have another shape coming out interlocking with this. And then I might decide to do another shape here coming around and see how I purposely go in the opposite direction. So these stems are going up, but this petal's going like this. That is all intentional. Very, very important. And then I'm gonna do just a couple of other shapes. This one's kind of nice because it shows you how the leaf formations are. You can see they're alternating in there. There's usually a pet, some kind of a leaf on the end. Very often they overlap. They have these strong lines and they alternate. So I always uh, kind of check it out before I start drawing. Get some idea of what the actual petal is like and then just go for it. 
So I actually kind of like this configuration right here. So maybe I'll just take, and they do have those jagged edges if I want to get into that. And I could have another petal coming out here, wider on this side coming in. If I want to, I could do some alternating shapes. And then I like the way this one is turning. So see, you've got the petal here in front of that other petal. So we've got enough information now. Let's get some paint on the paper. So just using about a number 10 brush. And I'm thinking about colors. What colors do I want to do? I could stay with the purple. Purple yellow is a beautiful complementary combination. And I also like some of these greens. So I think maybe I'll just do some grayed down greens. So I'm going to start with some quinacridone gold. This is such a great base for a green. And then if we go to Antwerp blue, this is my very often one of my favorite combinations. But see, that's still kind of bright. I'm not sure I want to go that bright. So I think I might come in with some French ultramarine blue. And that's going to gray it down, darken it a bit. And then what I can do is just put my little puddle system. I'll put some more gold out here. And I'll put some more Antwerp over here. And then just for variation, I'll go in and out of these colors. So you'll be able to tell when I do it. So I'm going to start right now with... Mm, this is sort of a dark area. Coming through here. So I think that's what I'll do. I'll just start up in here. So one of the first things I'm going to do is identify my petal shapes. You don't have to start really dark. Usually you start just kind of dark. And then I'm just going to switch. I've decided I wanted to add some more red to this too. So I'm going to take some of this Scarlet Lake. We'll just let some of that come in too. And let's go a little bluer over here. The important thing is to lose the edges. So just with clean water, I'm going to come in here and lose these edges. Shake it and lose it. And now I'm going to move my way over to this, this one here. And I might start thinking about some negative shapes at this point too. Why not? It's kind of fun. Anything that looks like a petal or a stem, it's a good time to put it in there. And again, we'll lose these edges. So what I'm trying to do is only define part of the flower. This part is going to be left open. Now we'll go from this side. You can see I'm going a little bit darker, a little grayer here. So we'll come over here. Remember, this is our cute little bud here. I'll just come in here a little bit. And now I'm just going to lose these edges. Lose, 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 lose these edges. And then if I want to add a little more color, I can. If I want to break this up with a little salt, I can. And I think what I'll do is start in here and do a passage. Bump into the flower here, 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 over here. And see, because my paint is transparent, all those purples under there are affecting 
the final color. I like that. That's what it's all about. Transparent watercolor at work. So now I'm just going to come up to the, some of these shapes I drew in. But I'm going to lose this here. So see, I'm, I'm leaving some of these edges on without paint. Just leave the underpainting for now. Same here, let's leave that edge crisp. Let's come down here and lose this. Let's lose this. Let's move in close again and define part of this flower. Maybe over to here. And then let's lose these edges. Whenever you're not sure, whenever you're having any doubt, when in doubt, just fuzz it out. Just that's it. And I also want to, you know, every now and then I want to add just a little bit more warm color. I like that color. So now our path is moving from here. And I'm gonna now I'm gonna come back down here. So let's let's go clear to the other side and leave this side open. Don't go all the way around. This I know that does that doesn't make a lot of sense, but just do it. <laughs> it really does work. So little broken shapes there. I'm actually painting around my drawn lines here. Over here I've got some shapes I'm drawing around. Now I'm going to come in and lose these edges. This is so important. Remember I said this lesson's about lost and found edges. So all the edges that are out here get lost. And you just, you don't want to come in with too much water. I'm, I'm going to talk more about that right now. I'm put a little salt here too because I like that broken, I like that broken up with little white shapes. Now over here, see if I come in here and put those little dark shapes through here and here, maybe one here, then it's really important that I come in and lose that edge. And one of the things I haven't shown you at this point is how I shake the brush out. I take the water and I shake it. And then I take a little extra moisture off here and then I come in and lose that edge. So if you come in with too much water, you're risking creating a bleed back. So it's very important that you wet your brush with clean water, shake it out, take the extra moisture out, and then just lose it with enough water that you're not creating bleed backs. So good, now we have a passage coming up, linking through here. I could actually kind of zigzag across here just a little bit. Let's do that. We'll come in here. And pull a little bit of this color right here off the top. Even better. Put a little salt. <laughs> Love that salt. So now we have our path coming in and I want to define this flower. I'll probably go here and here. And the, the reason I'm doing it that way is because see I have this path already started here. So let's start, let's go here. Go around our shapes, wet the brush, shake it out, take the extra moisture, lose the edge, lose the edge, lose the edge, lose the edge. Beautiful. So we're moving in. Now I want to come across here. Leave this open, come over here. So we'll just come around here, start to define this edge, go around some of these shapes we drew in. 
What's drawn? Let me see. <laughs> I love all these little shapes that I got from my wax paper. No, that's enough. Wet it, shake it, touch the extra moisture, come in here, lose the edge, come up here, lose the edge, come over here, and lose the edge. So now what we've done is we've really started a lovely path. I think I'm probably going to need one more little tweak here so that I'm going off this edge. So again, we'll just lose this edge, come in here and lose this edge. Beautiful. So we're coming in here, going up here, coming down here and going out here. And if I want to, I could even pull it a little bit more. I always like to link these shapes to the edge of my paper. Another little touch of salt. Ta Yay. So now we can think a little bit while this is drying. And now we can start looking into the reverse. Let's look at some of the positive shapes. So when, when we did this whole background, that was all negative painting, all negative painting. We've kept some of the underpainting. See, I love this purple blue, those little purples that are still evident. And I just like our new path of green dancing through here. Now it's time to think about some of the positive shapes. See, we've got shapes we drew that we haven't painted yet. We also have all these shapes that we want to think about. So let's take a look. For example, what are the shapes that define the inside? There's a little dark shape here. When there's a petal over a petal, you see a, this, this probably, I don't, they're not printed out very well. But you can see any petals coming to the foreground are going to be lighter because they're catching the light. Anything behind is going to be darker. So whenever you paint florals, you always start with the petals that are furthest back. That's just a little rule that we've known about for a long time. And I just love it when I tell everybody, don't forget, you always start with the back pedal and they always go, oh, really? And I go, yep, I've been telling you that for a long time. <laughs> so let's try it. Now we could go into a gray. These are simply a gray if we want the flowers to stay white, but obviously they're pretty uh, yellow and orange at this point. So I think I'm going to go into more, more color, warm them up, and maybe a little bit of gray too. So if I decide to do gray, I'll show you what I do. I first of all take a little bit of Windsor orange, and the complement to that is cobalt blue. And when you put those two colors together, you get a lovely gray. So if you're doing a white flower, you're going to want to make it this kind of a gray, a warm gray and a cool gray. And if you're doing a bright, bright color like I'm thinking about doing, this is Scarlet Lake. Sometimes what I'll do is I'll just take a little gray and mix it with the Scarlet Lake so it's not quite so bright. So let's see how that's going to work. And one of the things I like to do at this point now is I like to draw in some of these pistils and stamens that are surrounding. Some are higher, some are lower. And they're almost all radiating out from the center. So now it's really not necessary to draw them all in, but I think it kind of helps. And you crisscross them. Some go this way and uh, crisscross them. So they're all different. So now if I come in with this really nice bright Scarlet Lake, ooh, isn't that pretty? Leave the very center light. And we're negatively painting around these little pep, little pistols and stamens. And this is behind that white that's sticking out. So now at this point, I can just wet my brush, shake it out, 
take a nice clean come in and lose that edge so see it's all now in the center let's do another one we'll start over here and a round brush is perfect for this what's going on here we'll just come in you know what I think there's a well, maybe not I was having trouble getting paint on the surface but it's working now okay so again I'm this is behind this these petals in the foreground so I'm just going to leave them really nice define those and then just lose the edges beautiful same over here let's define those little pistols and stamens but then lose this and see generally I would start with this back petal if I got excited about getting that center so now I want to come around and define the petal in the foreground isn't that looking nice but look at what I've got here I have a edge against a light okay now this is the best part I am going to make, even though this is a light colored flower, I'm going to make this outer edge dark because it's next to a light. Oh, love this. Same thing, just keep controlling it by taking the extra moisture out and then just losing this edge. So now we have dark against light, light against dark. And if you look over here, look at this. I just lucked out here this is against a light edge so we'll bring this in and lose it but if, if you really look at this this petal behind here actually needs to be darker next to the edge wet it lose it here and then over in this area make it dark again so you can, it's just let the picture talk to you and tell you what to do. You just make it dark against light, light against dark. Now in order for this petal where I turned it to come forward, we're going to have to do a little bit of dark behind it. So we're just going to come around here. My paper is actually dry. And then I just come in and lose that edge because I don't want it to be hard. So it's just all these reversal games. I think I could go just a little bit darker here. Push, pull, leave it light because see it's going to be darker. And now there's a petal out here of all things. Well, we'll go darker here to pop it out. And then we'll go darker out here. And then in the meantime, we'll put water on this side and we'll put some water on this side and let them meet in the middle with this light. And that actually makes the petal look like it's going, raising up. So I like that. And so now we're, we're ready to kind of go around and do the same thing for a number of these. So let's, let's just move in a little closer here. we're going to look at this particular petal and again I think it's really a good idea to take and draw a few of these cute little rascals so you've got some kind of a guidance crisscross them over some smaller some taller some right at the bottom some can go way up oh you know what there are little things in the center interesting So we're ready to go again. Let's take the same color. This is my Scarlet Lake. And if I want it grayer, I can put that mixture in. Actually, I'm enjoying it, this nice bright color. 
So I'm just taking a chance that I'm going to like it. I'm painting around my little pistols and stamens that I just drew. For now, I'm going to leave the center light. I might go darker. And then it's just a matter of losing that edge. Losing the edge. And you can see out here, this petal needs to be light, but it needs to be darker on this edge. So now we're going to go to the most out, furthermost out petals. And then, of course, we're going to lose that edge. And the same thing here. This time I'll just make up some of those little rascals. It's almost easier, though, if you draw them. <laughs> And this is nice. These are all mostly dark. So we'll go light there, light there. And then out here, this petal can actually be dark on the outside. So I think it's really fun reversing all this. And otherwise, they all end up the same. And see, we've got that little petal in the center. That's catching the most light. So that's definitely going to have pretty much dark all the way around it. With a lost edge, of course. <laughs> now, let me see. I think I'm going to go and try this dark edge here. Lose it here. And see, I like some edges just to be lost. So I'm going to try something here. I'm just going to wet, wet the page. And when I come in with this dark color here, I'm just going to let it float away. I'm just going to let that edge be lost. Even though it's kind of drawn in there, I want some edges to be lost like that. That's where I get in trouble. I get too realistic. See, I like some of these edges just soft and lost. Cool. Let's see if we can do that. I don't mind all these edges being defined because it's in the focal area. But when we get to edges, it's really nice just to let them disappear. Oh, that worked out great. Let's try this little corner down here. I know this is repetitious, but I think it's okay. Again, we're going to draw in some of these pistols and stamens. When I go to classes, I'm always getting in trouble because I call them sex organs, but <laughs> pistols and statements. <laughs> That's funny. Okay, so we have enough of those to get the idea. And now I could be starting on the outside, but I just really like getting this dark in the center to begin with. So again, I'm negatively painting around these guys. Just takes a minute to draw them, just takes a minute to paint it. And once I get around most of them, I've been leaving the center white, but like I say, I might change my mind about that later. Now we're just going to come in and with our damp brush, lose that edge. Nice. And then over here now, because we're getting close to an edge, and I love all this stuff, I'm going to do the same thing again. I'm going to take my brush, and I'm just going to wet this. Same here. 
I'm just going to wet it and I'm just going to let those colors run and flow and get lost. And I'm probably going to add a little salt in it too. Now the rest of these edges, because they're in the focal area, see I'm going to make these edges where I see them. Over here. And then starting here, I'm going to paint all the way out to the outside edge. And then I'll lose these edges in here. Over here, I'm going to define that edge of the petal. And let's see. I'm not even sure what some of this is. Hmm. When in doubt, fuzz it out. So we're just going to come in and basically we're done with these flowers. Oh, I love it. Now we've got these lovely little buds and they're all, they're really beautiful. You can see here some of the buds. There's some white showing, there's some pink, there's some lovely greens. So we're going to get the whole thing in the picture again. So we're going to go to these little buds. And see that's really nice just to pull a little bit of that warm color in there. I thought I had more buds. <laughs> I'm going to make this a bud here. Soften some of those edges. And at this point, now we're ready to start thinking about some positive shapes. This is pretty exciting. We've been doing a lot of negative painting. I'm not, I'll just paint this one on my own. But right now, what we want to do is start thinking about creating some positive shapes. So I'm going to go back to my formula here. I'm going to take some Quin Gold, some Antwerp Blue, and that together is going to be a lovely, lovely olive green. Isn't that pretty? And then if I want it grayer or darker, I can just add a little French Ultramarine. So now this mixture will make a really nice positive color. Of course it relates to what's already here so if I want to add another shape here maybe fill in some shapes here paint a shape here <laughs> now another thing you can do is if you kind of painted around a lot of things, you could actually start drawing in some more. Or just take your brush and just simply paint it in. I really enjoy that. Just kind of lace yourself around, make them thicker, thinner. So it's very fun to come in and do some nice positive shapes. So I'm going to come up here and do a few. Salt keeps the paint wet a lot longer too. And we could actually start designing some of these shapes in a counter movement very important. See this this is going exactly the opposite of that. We could come in here, cross over, go this way. So it feels good now to be adding some positive shapes. Here's a shape we actually drew. There's a few others here, but we could also come in and just go ahead and paint some in.
And then we could also do some light colors. See, like this would look nice with some, some yellows added. This might look nice with a few yellows. So it just feels good to give some of these, to pull some of the yellows from the flowers now into some of the leaves. That's easy. And the part that the part that's exciting that's coming up is going to be we're going to let this dry and then we're going to come back and do some really strong darks. That'll be the the final step. Okay, well, I, I like what's happening so far. I especially like some of these white shapes that are linking through the center. And I also like the relatively dark shapes. What we need now are just those punchy dark darks. And there's so many combinations, but I think I can get as dark as I need to almost with the same combination. Gold, Quinburned Orange, ah, let me try that again. Quinn Gold, Antwerp Blue, and just a little bit of French Ultramarine to gray it down a bit. And this will be the final punch. And when I come in with this, I'm again thinking about the path. So if I do a really nice dark green here, save what looks like maybe a stem or a leaf, Maybe some kind of a counter movement going through. And then whenever you get to the point where you're not sure, hmm, I'm not sure where to go, let me see. Let's just end it, stop. But over here, I wanna carry this up here. So now I want to design in some more negatives. See that becomes kind of a little leaf. And then here we can save a little bit. A little break it up here. I might stop right there and quick lose, lose. Whenever you're not sure, lose that edge. And now I want to go much darker here. Juicing up my colors a bit here. Yeah, now we're cooking. Maybe a leaf shape. Come over here. Just don't want to get it too busy. So again, now I'm just going to lose these edges. All the edges facing the outer part. I'm going to lose those. And I may even come across 
and just draw in a few more positives. Oh, well, little surprise. We'll just make that into a little something. Now I thought I was so dark, look at that. It's kind of faded out a bit here. So I'm gonna punch it up a little bit again, just a little. So now I like that passage. Now I'm gonna move down here right across and again as I design these shapes I'm going to design new ones in and almost always I do these new ones as a counter movement Again, wet the brush, shake it out. My brush is wet, but not dripping wet. Very important. And then I come in from this outer edge and lose it. Shake it, take the moisture, come in like this and lose that edge. Lose that edge, lose that edge. <clears throat> And over here, I actually need to continue this just a bit more. <clears throat> and now we'll lose it. Sometimes I'll even lose some of the edges in here if they look a little bit too hard. And now again, we could do some, some negative shapes. I mean, excuse me. Again, we can do some positive shapes. <clears throat> so let's have a shape maybe coming behind. Maybe this shape right here could be a little bit darker even. The shape here sticking out could be a little bit darker. <clears throat> and over here, this could become a darker shape. <clears throat> looks really dark but maybe it'll dry a little bit lighter and again I think a little passage down here is going to be all I need let's first of all design a shape within the shape maybe another petal coming out here Again, we're going to clean our brush and lose this edge. Oh, so important. Right here too, lose that edge. So I like what's happening here. I think I need one more little dark over here and we are done. Wow. <laughs> I'm happy. <laughs> So again, I'm going to design a little shape within this dark. Something real simple, maybe um, petal, another petal coming around, another shape coming out. 
wet it, take the extra moisture, lose this edge, lose this edge, lose them all. Lose them all. Oh, nice. And then this, now you know that area is wet, but I could still come in and do some positive shapes if I want. I could put a little salt in there to break it up a little more. And the only thing that's left to do that I think would be a nice little touch would be to do some of these dark little pistols and stamens. Now some are light. These are all pretty light. Aha! See, there's always some, some that have a little more color to them or a little bit of dark. So based on this little theory, I'm going to take a very small brush, just a little number one, and I'm going to mix a, a warm dark. So I'm just going to take some quinacridone burnt orange, one of my favorite colors, and I haven't even used it. And then we're going to take a little French ultramarine blue and make a very warm dark. <clears throat> and then just based on that, I'm going to add a few little dots and pull it in. Way out there. Yeah. And we don't need to do a bunch of them, and they don't have to be, like, don't do it like a pinwheel. I know you wouldn't do that, but just in case you were thinking about it. Just a few dots here and there. And if we do it on, on most of them, I think that'll be a good idea. The last touches. This is exciting. I'll just go around and do these and he can, Jonas can speed this up. And <clears throat> even these little guys are dark. The center. Still do a few little dark shapes here. And I could never resist just having a few lines. I don't know why. I just love them. And I usually do them in a counter movement. So that's going this way. I'll make that go in that way. This is behind. I might make it just a hair darker. And maybe one last little line. I don't know why, but lines excite me. So there you have it, my finished piece. I think what I better do is put a mat around it. There you go. Well, I hope this lesson is inspiring for you and that you work on the lost and found. I tried. Um, you see, I can keep everything really crisp in the center, but you can see where I tried very hard on the edges to have some lost. Even things like this, I keep them a little softer. I keep my darkest darks, 
the most controlled edges, the most in focus things happening through the focal area. And then when I get to the edges, I like to vignette it into a nice softer look. So I hope it goes well for you.